in that line of suspension of disbelief. You know, we talk, well, we talked about the Undertaker thing before, and, and in someone else's hands, the sitting up, the zombie thing, you know, could have been ridiculous. Was this ridiculous? It was maybe the worst. It's right up there with the gobbledygook. It's maybe like the second worst idea they ever did. I remember watching it and going, oh, that's awful. That's, that's everything that pro wrestling should never try to be. It, it, that's fake. That's like, so, it's, so, it was awful. I think Vince knew when he did it after it was done that it was like a total. It was like it was like breaking kayfabe. It was like it was it was awful. It was one of the dumbest things they ever did, and uh, it took a long time to move. Uh, only a Bret Hart could clean up that mess. Um, now Charles, who's like a like a fun, loving, good-natured guy, an odd guy to pick to play a mute zombie. No, not really. I thought he had a great look. If anything, I liked. Papa Shango and the look and the gimmick and the name. I, I wish they had kept it. I don't think they they should have built him stronger. The way they should have kept building him the way they were. He, he was actually a pretty. I thought he was a good worker. And, uh, well, good worker, but but Charles has a has a great magnetic personality. It, maybe they weren't taking. It, maybe they could have had. Well, they could have got a, maybe a mouthpiece for him if that's the case. But um, there's you know, he, he was that kind of a freaky monster that he could have. Easily had a mouthpiece. That's kind of where they, that's where they fit best, is with a guy like Papa Shango. I think Pat Patterson hated the gimmick, hated Papa Shango's work, and maybe wasn't a big fan of him either. And um, kind of shut that idea down when it was still kind of just kind of getting the wheels up and running still. And that, that thing with Warrior was almost killed him off like it was a real it left a bad taste it made everyone groan and turn wrestling off like it was awful conflicting stories about his departure uh, some say it was over money uh, some say they wanted him to job to nails and he didn't want to do that no neither I one know, I know what happened to, to Warrior I was one of the first people that got called on it. Vince called me and he goes, because he told me, he goes, we have to fire Davey. He goes, we're letting, I just wanted to call you before I fire him to tell you that we're letting him go. He goes, we had to let him go and we had to let Warrior go. I was supposed to work with Warrior at the Rumble that year. Oh, the Rumble. I thought it was going to be WrestleMania. It was no, it was supposed to be the Rumble. Okay. And he was going to put, Vince said, you put, beat him with a sharpshooter right in the middle, is what Vince told me. And I remember going, wow, that'll be huge if it happens. And then, like it was a week later, they tell me that um, Warrior and Davey were um, buying steroids or growth hormone or something from some guy in Europe, and um, he was shipping it to them or something like that. But um, anyway, he got busted. The guy in England he got busted, and Warrior panicked. And I remember he, he panicked, and without telling Davey, he called Vince and said, uh, "I just wanted because Vince had the trial coming up." Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd better tell you this just in case, but uh, this guy that was we were getting our uh, steroids from, he's got our name on the list and all that stuff. But anyway, he got busted yesterday and they put him in jail. And anyway, he goes, it might be some kind of a uh, follow from it. And Vince goes, you guys are like toxic. I got to You're mm -hmm. done. You're done. You're, and you're both fired now. And he fired Warrior and he fired Davey, oh, just like that. And I got the call before Davey got told. Mm. And that's how it came down, for sure. In that line of suspension of disbelief, you know, we talked. Well, we talked about the Undertaker thing before, and and in someone else's hands, the sitting up, the zombie thing, you know, could have been ridiculous. Was this ridiculous? It was. Maybe the worst. It's right up there with the gobbledygook. Is maybe like the second worst idea they ever did. I remember watching it and going, "Oh, that's awful. That's that's everything that pro wrestling should never try to be. It, it, that's fake. That's like so, it's so, it was awful. I think Vince knew when he did it after it was done that it was like a total. It was like it was like breaking kayfabe. It was like it was. It was awful. It was one of the dumbest things they ever did, and uh, it took a long time to move. Uh, only a Bret Hart could clean up that mess. 
Um, now, Charles was like a, like a fun, loving, good-natured guy. An odd guy to pick to play a mute zombie? No, not really. I thought he had a great look. If anything, I liked Papa Shango and the look and the gimmick and the name. I, I wish they had kept it. I don't think they... They should have built him stronger. The way they should have kept building him the way they were. He, he was actually a pretty... I thought he was a good worker. No. Well, good worker, but, but Charles has a, has a great magnetic personality.